There's this cool project I need to make. We are supposed to work on it for two weeks, but I've been doing other stuff, which means I have to do it well today. What is the project, I hear you ask? You know how I plan to build a robotic dog this year? It's got nothing to do with it, because this project is boring as fuck. As you might guess, I don't have much time, so I'm just gonna speed run this. So I got this pendulum, it's gonna swing, and I need to use sensors to record the angle. Then when I plot the angle over time, it's gonna look something like this, because the oscillations get smaller. And from this graph, I need to calculate the damping ratio. To measure the angle directly, I'm gonna use a magnetic encoder, which you'll see in a minute. I'm also gonna measure the angle with IMU. The IMU measures acceleration in free axis, and it measures angular velocity also in free axis. I'm gonna use the IMU to guesstimate the angle. Getting the data out of the IMU is gonna be the main thing. When I get the data, I'm gonna use some filters to get a nice graph. This is the magnetic encoder, it's called AS5600. I'm just soldering some pin headers to it, so I will be able to connect it to Arduino easily. Since we live in modern times, I just ask ChatGPT to provide me with the wiring diagram. I get this encoder magnet, it has poles arranged radially, so when I rotate the magnet, the magnetic field also rotates, which is read by the encoder. Alright, the encoder is wired, the mount has been printed, so now I'm gonna add this GY521 IMU, which is a free axis accelerometer and gyroscope. For the wiring, I used ChatGPT again, and to write the actual Arduino code, you can guess that I also use ChatGPT. Now I'm just testing the IMU, you can see that when I rotate it, the angular velocity in my code changes. Yeah, this is pretty fucking awful. The wires affect the swing too much. I've made the pendulum longer, I added more holes so I can make it heavier. I also improved this joint to make it wiggle less. Despite the looks, this is a pretty shitty setup. I'm moving the pendulum, my PC is reading the signals from the Arduino and it's plotting them in the terminal. This thing is fucking horrible. The encoder isn't positioned well because I use these long bolts. The pendulum vibrates like crazy, which is horrible for measurement. This needs to be precise, which is not. I should have just used a bearing, but I thought it wouldn't provide enough friction, I don't know. This is so laughably bad, I should definitely remake it. But when I'm gonna present this, they are not gonna see the video, so I'm not doing that. This is the data from the encoder. And if you're wondering how I got this nice data out of this trash, it vibrates in this axis. So I solve this problem by tilting this. Then it doesn't vibrate as much. This is what the angle looks like. It's nice, but you can see that it starts at 60 degrees. I just take the first value and then I subtract it from the data. And now it oscillates around zero. So this data is really good, measuring it with the encoder is easy, but if I had a drone for example, I couldn't measure it with an encoder. So now I'm gonna use the data from the IMU, and I'm gonna try to get this same graph with the data. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, which is pretty sick. I mean, imagine doing your math homework and getting paid for it. That's kind of what I was shooting for. These sponsored videos are the reason I was able to afford this nice camera. Thank you guys for the support. I use PCBs for pretty much everything. I've used them for my hexapod and I'm gonna be using them for my robotic arm. Here it didn't quite make sense because it's just a small school project, but anything bigger than this you want to use PCBs. It will save you so much time because all of this can be compressed into a nice little circuit board. If it's your first time using PCB way, you get a $5 bonus. They also do CNC machining, injection molding and other stuff. I think they even sell oscilloscopes which is pretty sick. To get the angle out of the gyroscope, I integrated the angular velocity and I got this graph. 
you can see that this data looks similar to the encoder, but it has a downward trend. There's an error in the gyroscope. So when we integrate the angular velocity, we also integrate the error. Okay, we got the angle out of the encoder, which is great, but if this were a drone, we couldn't use an encoder. Then we got it out of the gyroscope, which has a downward trend, and now we're gonna get it out of the accelerometer data. Let's assume the pendulum is at an angle theta. This is how the IMU is oriented. We can draw the accelerations the IMU would measure. Now we can use the measured accelerations to get the theta angle. It only works if this angle theta is constant, which it's not. So the angle theta is gonna have some error in it. And if we plot this out, you can see that it kind of works, although there's a lot of noise in the data and it's also very inaccurate. If you look at the gyroscope data, short term, this is a pretty decent estimation, but over time, the error grows bigger and bigger and it diverges. On the other hand, if you look at the accelerometer data, short term, this is awful. If you look at this first peak, it jumps to negative 20 degrees for some reason, but long term, here the angle is kind of around zero, while for the gyroscope it's minus 15 or something. We can combine the benefits of both of these sensors and get a decent estimation for the overall angle. This is a perfect job for a complementary filter. If you want to see a more detailed version of this video where I explain everything, check out my twin channel. We take the angular velocity from the gyroscope, multiply it by the change in time and we get the change in angle. To get the overall angle, we need to add this change in angle to the previous angle. These two signals get added up. And from this, we get a new estimate for the angle. I'm gonna call it theta e for estimation. We feed this estimate to the next time step. The notation for this is just one over z. This loop says that we take the velocity, multiply it by the change in time to get the change in angle. And we add this change in angle to the previously estimated angle to get the new estimate. Now we are going to add the data from the accelerometer. From the accelerometer we get the calculated angle and we want to combine this with the angle from the gyroscope. We can take, for example, 90% of this gyroscope angle. So we multiply it by 0.9. And we take the complement of this, which is 0.1. And add these two signals up. So we take 90% of the gyroscope angle and only 10% of the accelerometer angle. Then we get a new estimate and feed it to the next time step. And this is also a low pass filter. So we are letting only the low frequencies of this accelerometer data pass through. If you want a better explanation of this filter, you can check out Brian, I will link him in the description. Now for the code, we first estimate the angle to be zero. In a for loop, we calculate the angle from the gyroscope to be the previously estimated angle plus the change in angle from the gyroscope and we calculate the complementary filtered angle to be 90% of the gyroscope angle plus 10% of the accelerometer angle. The orange curve is the encoder angle. That's what I'm comparing the filtered angle to, which is the blue curve. You can see it's pretty similar, so we did a good job. And now we can really see what the complementary filter does. It captures the short time data from the gyroscope and to get rid of this downward drift, it uses long-term data from the accelerometer. I think this filter is great. It's quite easy to code. It's just these three lines. The results are great also. So I'm probably gonna use this in a robotic dog or something to estimate the state of the robot, like its orientation. 
And yeah, this project is finished. This was the main part. I also implemented extended common filter, but I think I probably fucked it up, so I didn't show it in this video. Now I'm gonna present it in front of my class and see what I get. <laughs> 